Hi there, and welcome to another Sketchpad tutorial video. I'm Dave Stewart, a creator of Sketchpad, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use Sketchpad to develop feature ideas from a few fragments of code into fully fledged reusable tools. Sketchpad's default installation configuration installs Sketchpad's resources separately from your application, with the idea that you should be able to experiment and try out ideas in isolation from your app's code. For example, let's say a new feature requires you to use a third party API. If you're new to APIs, you might want to learn the basics before committing to build a new service. With Sketchpad, you just add a controller and test out whatever code you need to in methods. If you have other requirements, create additional files and try out other ideas, building up units of runnable code. For our sample tool, let's pretend we're building a user notification service. Perhaps something broke in production and we need to find users by name and send them an email. For this tool, we'll need to do several things. Query the database, filter users by property, take user input, paginate large result sets, toggle previewing and running the action, sending the actual emails, and viewing results. Let's start by opening a controller in our Sketchpad controllers folder and adding a new method. As we have Sketchpad Reload running, you can see it immediately show up when we save the file. We navigate to it in the browser and it runs. If we add a dot comment, that's reflected immediately in the front end as well. We use the database class to load our users from the database. Then we view the results using Laravel's dump and die. However, Sketchpad gives us some more useful functions. PR will quickly print readable results and TB will render a table. Let's update the query to only what we need, then we'll consider that function finished. For our second test, we want to use Sketchpad's front-end features to provide a basic UI with which to filter users. We'll duplicate the method, add the name and comment, add a parameter which is immediately shown in the front-end, then pass that value into a modified query. Straight on to our third test, and we're going to paginate the results to save hammering the database. Again, we'll duplicate the method, update the comment, and add our new code. At this point, we get an error. The table helper doesn't know what to do with the paginator instance, but not to worry. All we need to do is pass the paginator's items to the table helper, save, and the error disappears as soon as the code is valid. We also echo the paginator object, then we can interact with it live in the browser, update our input, and see the results. We now have the basis for our final email tool, so let's duplicate the code for one last time and set up our function to take a few final lines of code. It would be nice to provide some additional user feedback which we can do by extracting some values from the paginated results and displaying them using the paragraph helper. At the same time, we can customize the table output with column widths and an index. One of our goals for the tool was to be able to filter by name or email, so let's add another parameter to modify our query. This leaves us in the right place to finally send the email. So we'll loop over the loaded users and email each one individually. For the demo, I'm just going to add a dummy email function and return the result of the send as a boolean. We can add this to each user as a property, which is passed along to render in the table. However, by using the table helper's icon functionality, we can automatically render ticks or crosses, which provides an additional level of user feedback. You've probably noticed that each time the code is updated, or each time the parameters change, that the method reruns. This would mean that all the users are emailed again. In a situation like this, what we need is some kind of toggle or switch to only take action when we say, and luckily Sketchpad provides this. By adding a special Boolean parameter called run, Sketchpad adds a visual toggle in the front end. Enabling this toggle and running the method passes the value as true, which we can use in the code to perform conditional execution. Note that this toggle is reset after each use. 
Our tool is now pretty much complete, so let's add a couple more tweaks to make it really user friendly. Firstly, let's show something a little more attention grabbing when sending emails, in this case using the alert helper to output a bootstrap alert element. Next, let's improve the way the field parameter is passed by using a field tag. This provides a little more direction to Sketchpad in building the UI. We're going to tell it to render an HTML select element with only the values we need. Finally, let's make the tool a favorite, again by using a tag. This adds a star icon next to the method name and places it in the list of favorites so we can access it at any time. All that's left to do now is delete our working out methods. And we're done. Sketchpad comes with many useful features to make prototyping and debugging easy. I'll turn on the live docs and demo tools and take you through them. You've seen the test run toggle, which allows us to modify parameters and only run code when ready. New to you will be Markdown Views, which let you build HTML views really simply and even allows you to inject variables in the same way that Blade does. Pagination you've seen. The helper methods make it really easy to add text content or output data without needing views. And tags give you a whole host of options to customize method presentation or behavior in the front end. To show off Sketchpad's features, you can take a look at some of the demo tools that ship with the package. The View Roots tool uses a view helper to easily build a Vue.js app and provide an interactive alternative to the artisan roots command. The Browse File System tool pulls together views, the file system, and implicit linking. The Sketchpad Settings tool dumps data using the JSON helper. And finally, the Random Cat tool calls the Cat API to load in third party content. Hopefully, that's given you a good idea of how you might use Sketchpad in your day to day development and some of the functionality you can add to the snippets and tools that you build. Over the year that Sketchpad's been in development, I've used it on multiple jobs, from testing simple snippets of code to remote database management and long-standing admin tools, and it's made it all significantly faster, easier, safer, and more fun. You can test drive Sketchpad with the online demo or even look at installing Sketchpad using the links below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.